Hi and welcome back to another video. In today's video we again got some goodies from Gigabyte. Unfortunately I have to return them again after this video. Maybe once they will make it happen that I can keep everything but yeah. I think it's not going to happen. Anyway we have the C490 Aorus Extreme right here. We have some Aorus memory. 4400 memory sticks and 10900k CPU, obviously my CPU, but in today's video we will check a myth. It's not really a myth, but people still think that if you take a 10900k, 10700k, whatever, and disable cores for overclocking, that you can overclock the CPUs higher. I don't think it's the case, but I also have to highlight that I didn't test it so far for 10900k, therefore that is what we're going to test in today's video. We also have a monitor from Gigabyte, we also got for t our testing and that's what we will do in the second half of the video. We all know that the 10900K is a monolithic design unlike the nowadays AMD Ryzen CPUs and this myth that disabling cores will help OC originates basically from the Socket 775 era, especially with Q6600 CPUs which were not a monolithic design, they were also using what AMD is using nowadays. And the Q6600 using a multi-chiplet design back then when you were disabling cores and you were lucky then you maybe hit the chiplet which was a little bit worse obviously if you have two chiplets on a CPU there is a chance that one chiplet has a higher grade than the other one. If you're lucky and you disable the cores on the worst chiplet then you can gain a better overclock but on a monolithic design like on a 10900K I don't think it will help anything. It should decrease the power consumption obviously if some cores are not doing anything and if you have a very bad cooling solution it could help you in your maximum overclock otherwise I don't think so but we're going to test that. Memory kit today using DDR4 4400, which is certainly quite a lot. There is always a question if this boots easily, and that's something we will definitely try. Using a 16 gigabyte kit, therefore two sticks with eight gigabyte each. Monitor is a G27QC monitor, 1440p WQHD monitor, but the details will be in the second part of the video. The only thing I already like is the internal PSU. Now going to set up everything and then first 10900K testing and then this baby. Everything set up and in BIOS manually overclocked the CPU to 5 GHz, therefore clock ratio 50, ring ratio 43, definitely the there would definitely be room for more for the ring ratio, but we just need a stable base for now. XMP also worked fine with 4400 on the memory dims. I manually adjusted the DRAM voltage to 1.5 volt. This should also be adjusted by the XMP profile usually, but I just set it manually. To be sure, vCore 1.24 volt. Advanced, vo advanced voltage settings, then CPU VRM settings. I adjusted load line calibration to turbo. So it drops down a little bit, but not too much. On advanced CPU settings, adjusted number of CPU cores enabled right now to 10, which is the default. And then we will run some Cinebench, see what the power consumption and temperature looks like, and then lower it to like six cores. We will run Cinebench R20 for the moment, check power consumption and also temperatures. I already did the German version and therefore should be pretty much the same values. In the German one we had a maximum power consumption of 231 and 81 degrees Celsius max on the CPU package. I'm using the Gigabyte Tweak Launcher which is a very helpful tool. Going to adjust the CPU cores in a second. We're running 5.1, we're running 5.0 gigahertz right now and I will try to run 5.1 which should not be stable. And if we then disable some cores like running six cores, four cores, maybe one core, we can see or try if we can eventually pass 5.1 if there is any benefit and also how temperature and the power consumption reacts. 
almost the same it's two degrees lower on the package but pretty much identical power consumption that's good adjusting this to 5.1 yeah frequency supplied and it's not stable using half amount of the cores for the next test changing to five now that we're only using half the amount of cores, you would probably assume that we also only have half of the power consumption, but that should not be the case. You still have the Uncore and the PCI Express controller, memory controller, all of those are still running. Therefore, it should be quite more than half of the power consumption. R20 is running with five cores, 10 threads, which you can check in CPU-Z. Temperature-wise, it's a little bit lower, not that much lower. Previously, we had peak at 79, now it's 73. Power consumption 50% would have been 115, but we're closer to 130 watt. So there is like a base, it feels like there's a base of 15 watt more. And that is definitely related to the Uncore memory controller, internal GPU. But let's see if we can now pass 5.1. Adjusted the five cores to 5.1. Let's see if this will be stable or not. I don't think so. That is better than I expected. For some reason, that is surprising. So far it's running. To my surprise, it passed. Didn't expect that. Let's see if 5.2 passes. All right, 5.2 not working with five cores. The last test with two cores for threads, running R20 right now again with five gigahertz across those two cores. We have 66 watt right now and that's like a third of the total power consumption we had with 10 cores and we are in the upper 60s which is like 10 to 12 Kelvin away from running 10 cores and that's quite interesting considering that we only have a fifth of the core but we are running a third of the power consumption and yeah 66 watt with only two cores that is quite a bit. We know that 5.1 is running with five cores. Let's see if 5.2 can pass with two cores. The result was a bit better than I expected. I personally expected that there is nothing you can tweak by lowering the amount of cores. We could increase the frequency by 100 megahertz going from 10 to five cores, but there was no benefit going from like five to two cores. And you could also see that the power consumption is not linear with two cores. We had still 65 watt power consumption shows that with a higher amount of cores, your CPU is becoming more efficient and you shouldn't expect much more overclocking potential when you lower the amount of cores. You can go to like one core if you want to do CPU Z validation, but even then you don't know if that single active core will be the best out of the 10. And if you have a single active core, then the load on this single active core is higher. Therefore, it's usually a trade-off and usually not worth doing so. But it also shows that the power density inside those individual cores is what's the limiting factor for overclocking nowadays. Simply if you look at two cores and they're still at almost 70 degrees Celsius and then you run 10 cores and it's like 79 to 80 degrees Celsius. It's like 12, 13 Kelvin difference going from 10 to two cores. And you would expect to it usually to be a lot colder, but it's because the power density inside a single core is just so high and two cores, 65 watts still and not 231 as with 10 cores. Now continuing with the second part of the video with the G27QC monitor from Gigabyte. As I said before, WQHD 1440p 165Hz refresh rate monitor, therefore could be quite a could be quite attractive if you're looking for a WQHD monitor. Usually with those monitor testing I can only do my subjective feeling or our subjective feeling and um, that's why we'll just game a little bit on a monitor, check out some of the features, see if it would be suitable for us. You would usually need some more expensive or more complicated um, testing equipment, for example to test input lag is something I don't have, but I can just play games. I'm still a gamer therefore I think I can just judge by my own subjectivity and see if I like it. Time to look at the new Gigabyte G27 QC monitor in more detail. A few weeks ago we already reviewed the G32 QC which is like the big brother of this 27 inch VA display. The G27 QC is currently listed at 330 euro here in Germany which makes it the cheapest 1440p 165Hz monitor on our market. 
Similar to the 32 inch version, this is a monitor with 2560 x 1440 pixel resolution and 16 to 9 ratio with 109 ppi. As a result of the 1500R curved display, which equals to a radius of 1.5 meters, you can immerse more into your game. Roman, however, currently prefers flat screens, but I'm more a fan of curved monitors to enjoy my games. The G27QC comes with integrated speakers, which are acceptable for a monitor to bypass time waiting for your new headset or in case you just want to watch some YouTube videos. However, we would always recommend to get a proper sound system or headset for gaming. The appearance is sleek and doesn't come with RGB, which is something we appreciate since it's usually more annoying than helpful on monitors in our eyes. The monitors stand feels proper and even with heavy mouse movements the monitor does not start to shake around. The stand also allows height adjustments and the possibility to tilt it up and down. It's not possible to rotate the G27QC but we're not missing this option on a curved display. Unlike the 32 inch version the G27QC is not HDR 400 certified and only states HDR ready. However, we would in general recommend to look for HDR 1000 monitors if this is an important feature for you. The true strength can be seen in gaming scenarios. 165Hz with freezing and the relatively high pixel density compared to the 32 inch version allow a nice experience in fast gaming such as any first person shooters. On paper the monitor is only G-Sync compatible ready but we had no problems activating G-Sync in the Nvidia control panel. Similar to the G32QC, you should also connect the G27QC with the included USB cable directly with your PC. This allows to use the Gigabyte software OSD Sidekick, which grants access to all important settings. You don't have to use annoying buttons or joysticks on the back to adjust your settings and can just use your mouse directly. Besides the usual features such as brightness and contrast, you can also use predefined profiles such as gaming or cinema settings. There are more gimmicks inside the OSD Sidekick software, starting from the additional crosshair to black equalizer. We already showed you last time how the black equalizer can lighten up dark area in games and definitely give you an advantage over your enemy. In addition, you can easily upgrade the firmware with only one click if necessary. Subjectively speaking, the colors look nice and the illumination was even. 92% DCI P3 with 8-bit color depth is a good base for gaming and we could not see any dead pixels or strange color spots. You can connect the G27QC over HDMI 2.0 or DisplayPort 1.4 with your VGA. However, only DisplayPort allows to use the full performance of 165Hz at 2K. Overall, the 27-inch monitor offers the cheapest entry to 1440p 165Hz gaming here in Germany and we can recommend it from our testing. To sum it up, monolithic CPU such as the 10900K don't really benefit from lowering the amount of cores in terms of overclocking. Obviously, if you're limited by cooling, then lowering the amount of cores for your extreme overclocking could help to get an extra 100 or maybe 200 megahertz, but don't expect more, especially for 24 7 overclocking you should not expect to gain a lot from disabling cores simply because the energy density in the individual core nowadays is very high. Speaking about the G27 QC monitor at least here in Germany I can recommend this thing because it's by far the cheapest 1440 165 Hertz monitor and from our testing was absolutely suitable cannot really say anything negative about it we enjoyed playing around with it unfortunately we have to send it back tomorrow. Alright, thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Bye.